Today, we're gonna to be installing Z-Wave from scratch in Home Assistant, step-by-step. Step. First, we'll go over what the best adapter is. Then we'll go through the installation and basic configuration of Z-Wave. That way it works seamlessly within Home Assistant. And then at the end, we'll add a device and make sure that everything works. To get started, we're gonna to need to pick out the right adapter for our use case. The best all around option is the Zoos ZST39 USB stick. It's honestly the best bang for your buck when it comes to features for the price. I have a link in the description if you want to check out the latest pricing. But the Zoos USB has Z Wave Long Range, S2 Security, and an 800 series chip, which means it's the latest, greatest Z Wave. I've been using it for a few years now and it's worked great for me this whole time. It's been rock solid and I've never had any issues with it. There are other options out there that will also work like the AOTech Z-Stick 10 Pro or the Home Assistant Connect ZWA2 or even something like the Zoo ZAC93, which is that GPIO one. They all have their pros and cons, but I think the all around best option is the Zoo ZST39. And that's the one we're gonna be using today for the rest of the video. If you're interested on a deep dive in the differences between all of these Z-Wave adapters, let me know in the comments and I'll put something together. But now that we've chosen our adapter, now we need to physically install it. It's pretty easy, it's USB, so you just plug it into the back of your mini PC or Home Assistant Green or something like that, and then you should be good to go. You don't need to worry about interference, like other protocols like Zigbee, for example, or Bluetooth, those can kind of sometimes be susceptible to interference with USB 3 ports. Z-Wave runs at a lower frequency than something like Zigbee or Bluetooth, and so that means it's less susceptible to interference. But you can still use a USB hub if you just wanna like keep things organized and clean and tidy. So once it's plugged in, we can verify that it's showing up in Home Assistant by going over to the settings and looking for Zoos in the hardware list. And then we should see the adapter listed there. And that means it's recognized by Home Assistant. And so next we're gonna install the Z-Wave JS UI add-on. But one quick thing here about naming, there's a couple different things called Z-Wave JS in Home Assistant. Quite honestly, the naming is kind of a pain point for a lot of people, there's the regular Z-Wave JS or the one that's like built into Home Assistant. And then there's also the Z-Wave JS UI community add-on, which also has the text Z-Wave JS inside the name, but they're different. But then Z-Wave JS UI also includes its own Z-Wave JS inside the add-on. It can be kind of confusing sometimes. So we're gonna be installing Z-Wave JS UI, the community add-on, and using that to control and manage are Z-Wave devices. So this Home Assistant instance here doesn't have anything related to Z-Wave configured in it. So this is where we're gonna be installing everything. So you're gonna to wanna to go to the community store and then you're gonna search for Z-Wave JS UI and then you'll click on install. Once it's done, you can check all of those auto start options over there on the left-hand corner. Let's just make our life a little easier and then go ahead and click start. One thing we've gotta notice here though, is that we wanna save this value under host name. This is gonna be useful later on we don't need it quite yet, but make sure you stash it somewhere and then we're gonna need it here in a few moments. Okay, so even though we installed Z-Wave JS UI, if you look on the left-hand menu, it will say Z-Wave JS. Kind of annoying, but that's where we wanna go. So you go ahead and click on that menu option and it'll bring up this pop-up box with like a dashboard behind it. You can go and select whatever you want for the metrics and then you should see a dashboard with some menu options over on the left-hand side. We need to change a few quick settings in order to get things ready to add our devices. And so we can go over here to the settings and we can go ahead and make those changes. You can ignore most of these. We're only gonna be changing a few. If you're interested in a deep dive on all of those settings, I have a video that explains what each one does, but most of them aren't needed for this setup. So here's the absolute minimum that we need to set for our Z-Wave to work correctly. So under the Z-Wave tab, you'll go to the serial port menu and you'll select the USB stick that we plugged in earlier. So you can go ahead and choose the Zoos option here. Next, you'll go to the keys setting. For all the keys settings here, you're just gonna check the generate button on all of these menu options. You don't need to like remember these or anything, but these are used by the USB adapter to secure our devices as we add them. So make sure all of these have values and then you'll go to the RF region section. You'll choose what region you're based in. I'm based in the USA. So I'll select that one here, and then you can leave the rest alone. Then under the Home Assistant tab, make sure the WS Server option is checked, and then you also make sure that the DNS Discovery option is checked too. Leave the rest alone, and then you can go ahead and save and restart if it prompts you to. 
All right, sweet. So now I can see our adapter in there. But how do we connect all this to Home Assistant so that way we can automate with our devices? Now here's where many folks get confused. So make sure you don't make this mistake. To connect what we just did with Home Assistant, we'll go to the Devices and Services, and we will add the Z-Wave integration. But instead of choosing Recommended, you're gonna to wanna to choose Custom. And then after choosing Custom, you will uncheck the Use Z-Wave Supervisor add-on option. Make sure that you uncheck that. We do not want, that's the default Z-Wave that's built in with Home Assistant. That's the built-in Z-Wave. We don't want that. Make sure you uncheck that and then click Next. It'll show this box with the WS and then a bunch of text after it. You remember that host name that we copied earlier? This is where you're gonna to wanna to paste that in. So you'll take the host name that we copied earlier and you'll paste it in where this text says local host and you'll paste that in there it should look something like this when you're done leave the rest alone you don't need to touch it leave the rest alone and then now you can go ahead and click submit that will connect home assistant to z-wave js ui that we configured a couple moments ago and now we can actually add a device and see it automatically added into home assistant so if you get your z-wave device like your smart switch or your wall switch or a fan switch or something like that. To add that in Home Assistant, you'll go to the control panel in Z-Wave JS UI. You'll then go to manage nodes and then you'll click inclusion. Type in whatever device name you want here in the box that reflects what device you're adding. I'm putting together a Home Assistant naming convention video and you're gonna to wanna to make sure and get subscribed for that once it comes out. So put whatever name you want here and then in the location box, you can go ahead and leave that blank. That information doesn't make it out of Z-Wave JS UI. It just makes it easier to see where devices are. So I usually leave it blank quite honestly and then add that location in Home Assistant instead. For our purposes, you can leave the default inclusion method selected and then click next. Now it'll give you 30 seconds to add the device to our hub that we added. This establishes the communication between the USB adapter and our Z-Wave device. Each device is different. Usually it's pressing a button a couple times or like pressing up and down on a switch several times. Usually it involves pressing buttons like a crazy man for several seconds until it actually pairs. Then if we did it correctly, it should show that it, our inclusion was successful. And then this means that it's not only added to our adapter, but it's also automatically added into Home Assistant. And so we can see it here in the devices and in the entities, which means now we can start automating it and adding it to our automations and our scripts. Most Z-Wave devices support Z-Wave long range recently, which theoretically allows the device to communicate with the hub from about a mile away, but it's not as easy as like tapping a couple buttons several times in order to enable that feature. So you're gonna to wanna to check out this video where I show you how to enable Z-Wave long range for your device using Z-Wave Smart Start, and I'll see you there.